just um, do an amazing thing by your spirit. Um, and that uh, all of uh, the team and all of the children would really come to know and understand you in ways that um, they need to uh, today, uh, for tomorrow, and for the days ahead. I just pray, Jesus, that you would be glorified um, in the word this morning. Um, we thank you so much for uh, your presence here with us. And I just uh, pray, again, that we would really uh, be conformed to your ways, um, transformed into your image more and more. And pray these things, Lord Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. So last week, I spoke about life in the body of Christ. And um, after our gathering, as is um, normal for Ruth and I on most Sundays, after we managed to, you know, have a few conversations from here to the car park and then um, finally <coughs> head home, um, Ruth started to prepare our Sunday lunch and I walked our dog Huxley. And as I was hu walking Huxley, I um, started going over all the things that I could have and thought that I should have said during the message last week to make it more complete. And um, later on, um, a lot of uh, people, actually a couple of people messaged me and said that, that what I spoke was exactly what they needed to hear that morning. And um, that it was perfect timing for God to hear what I spoke. And, uh, and I kept beating myself up thinking, I missed so many things. But if, if I think back on it, there was so much to say. And this morning is another, another one of those topics where there is also an awful lot to say on this. Um, so really, I'm just going to barely scratch the surface. There's so much more to this. Um, but um, as I was praying during the week and asking the Lord what the message should be, um, I um, heard him speaking to me about life in the Holy Spirit. And I think that when we gather together to hear a message and we do hear a message that speaks to us, we often get very excited about putting into practice what we've learned from God's Word. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of the time, I think one of the things that keeps that from happening is that we head home after our gathering, and you know sometimes we'll turn on the TV, or play on the computer, or our phones, or engage in this or that or the other thing, and somehow we find ourselves on a different track than what we had intended to do. And um, from that, often we'll feel frustrated or disappointed or feeling like we've let God down um, or that we're falling short in our Christian walk. And um, I think sometimes when that happens, I feel like, well, maybe I haven't been doing what I need to do properly. And you see, I, maybe I've given the right information, but um, with the biblical principles and all these various things, but maybe I've missed out on helping you get connected to the fullness of what it means <coughs> to have the Spirit of God operating in our lives. Without the working of the Holy Spirit in us, all the scriptures, all the biblical principles won't work. We need the Spirit of God in us, doing His work, having His way, having His will. And what can happen is that we try to put into practice spiritual principles, but we do it often through natural understanding, through faulty, limited human understanding. So how do we change that? How do we overcome that? Any thoughts? Don't have to answer that. You can if you really feel a burning desire to. But it's sort of a tacit question, really. So the answer is that, um, that we don't. Not in and of ourselves, we don't. But there is someone who does. God does. God does the work in us. <coughs> According to the word of the Lord through the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah 4, 6, the Lord said, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. So it isn't by our might, or by our power, but by the very Spirit of God at work on our behalf. And what's wonderful is that those whose faith is in Jesus Christ alone for salvation, for those who have truly trusted in Him, 
His Spirit, His Spirit dwells inside of us. 1 John 4, 4 tells us, You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He who is in you than he who is in the world. Greater is He who is in you than he who is in the world. That means that if you have professed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you have trusted in Him for forgiveness of sin, for salvation, for all that he came to do. This means that the Spirit of God resides in you. And greater is the Spirit of God in you than the devil, than Satan, and his demons who are in the world, along with anything and everything that they may throw at us, that the culture that conforms to those ways may throw at us. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, and I'm just going to emphasize a couple verses there, underlined especially. Paul wrote these words, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Um, I love little things that come together where, you know, the Lord confirms that the message that I'm, I'm giving on a certain day is, is the right message, which he had already done, really. But then this morning, um, which I didn't realize, I mean, I had seen this probably a month ago, um, this scripture was posted on our Facebook page. Um, and, and I do usually a month in advance go through and you know, set these things up. Um, and like I said, I had done that at least a month ago. You know, had no remembrance of what I had done back then. Um, but there it was. First thing this morning, I look at my phone and the scripture comes up. I'm like, oh, okay, just another, there you go. <laughs> this, this is the right message. Um, so here in what he wrote, Paul is saying that within every believer, there is tremendous power. The power that works within us is the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God himself, which strengthens us and empowers us to walk the journey of faith that Christ has set us on and to live in victory. To walk in the Spirit means to continually continue living life completely dependent upon the guidance and power of the Spirit of God. And when we do that, our sinful nature, along with the enticements of the world that come against us, with the devil's temptations, those things will stop dominating us. They will no longer have to <coughs> over us. They will lose their power over us. Understand that the power of the Spirit of God in our lives allows us to live effective lives for his glory. And so now what sort of power am I referring to? Well, one of them, and this is not a comprehensive list because it just can't be <laughs> time-wise, um, but one of those is the power to be an effective witness. Why is this important? It's not just important because we had an outreach yesterday with Ignite Ministries in the town center. Uh, that's not why I'm highlighting this. Um, or because we hope to increase our efforts sharing our gospel in our communities. But it is because of the great commission given by Jesus. And I'm hoping that we all, every single one of us, do have a desire to do the things that Jesus commanded us to do. So, I haven't put it on the slides here, but just for reference, um, the Great Commission from Matthew's Gospel, 
28, 19 through 20, uh, the first part of 20. Jesus told them, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. So Jesus commands his first disciples to do this, and then he tells them, teach those who you disciple, teach those who come after you to do the things that I'm telling you to do as well. So some people say, well, the Great Commission was just for them. But they were told to teach the people that came to faith to do the same thing, right? So it's not just for them. It's something for all of God's people. In Acts 1.8, we read, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest part of the earth. I like to um, sometimes think about the fact that um, being from the west coast of the <coughs> U.S., uh, you know, in the Americas, that if you look at Jerusalem on a map, from Jerusalem, that would be one of the ends of the earth, right? All over the, you know, the, the western coast of the Americas and the east coast of Asia would be as far to the ends of the earth as you could get from Jerusalem. So, um, you know, the gospel needs to be preached to every nation, tribe, and tongue, to all people, so that everyone has heard the word of God, the message of God, that if you belong to him, is resident in you. Now, 50 days after these words were spoken, the Holy Spirit did come in power, filling the room and the early disciples who had gathered in it. And tongues of fire came over them. And, if you will, a fire was lit underneath them as well to get up and proclaim the gospel. And that is what they did. Afterwards, they got up and they got out into the streets of Jerusalem and they proclaimed the wonderful works of God. So one of the things that the Holy Spirit empowers us to do is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to share the message of life, eternal life in him. Life in the Holy Spirit also gives us power to help enter God's presence. Power to help enter God's presence. That's an important one. Anyone enjoy being in God's presence? Yeah. And knowing that you're really there. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, God is omnipresent. You know, he, he is everywhere. But there's, there's, there's that truth, and then there's the reality of being really fully engaged with him at his feet, knowing that he is there with you and knowing that you are there with him. And that you are there with him, that's one of the biggest tricks, right? <laughs> because sometimes your mind is, you know, you know, over there on your bank account and over here on, you know, what you're going to eat and over there on what you can't eat or shouldn't eat or what somebody else is eating that smells really good or that smells really bad, you know. Our minds can be anywhere. But aware of the reality that we are with him and that he is with us. The Holy Spirit empowers our prayer life and allows us to enter into the presence of God in ways that we can't always even imagine. Romans chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 says, In the same way, the Spirit also helps in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So when it comes to prayer, in and of ourselves, in our human nature, we often have no idea what to pray, how to pray, when to pray, We'll have our own ideas. I mean, there's certainly a lot, if you think about it, that I can pray about this, I can pray about what's happening in the Middle East, I can pray about, you know, uh, all sorts. I mean, the list can go on and on and on and on. 
But there's something really powerful about praying <coughs> in agreement with the Spirit of God, who understands, who knows and sees all things. The Holy Spirit knows the mind and will of the Father and Jesus toward us. Therefore, he effectively intercedes on our behalf, helping us know and understand how we should pray, when we should pray, what we should pray. The Holy Spirit also gives us the faith to believe, which is something that we desperately need, right? Do you ever need an increase in your faith to believe that the things that you're praying for are the things that you should be praying for? And that because that the Holy Spirit knows and tells you that these are the things that you should be praying for, that you're praying in agreement with God, you're praying God's will, and God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I think we can all use that faith boost that comes from the Spirit of God. Sometimes maybe we don't feel like our prayers are being heard, or for that matter, answered. And because of that, we can feel disillusioned or disheartened or depressed and feel like, well, you know, what's the point in praying? But the Holy Spirit gives us faith to continue believing in God and his promises more than the circumstances that surround us. And so we are to pray in the Spirit, and that will grow our faith. In Jude, verse 20, we read, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And that's just a little snippet right there. But there's an important truth in this, is that when we pray in the Holy Spirit, it builds up our faith. It builds up our faith. And, you know, we are called beloved as well, which is always a good truth to hold on to. So what else is important about life in the Holy Spirit? How about being born of the Spirit? Or being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Very important. Really very crucial. Um, in John's Gospel, in chapter 3, verses 5 through 8, <coughs> we read what Jesus said to the Pharisee Nicodemus, who was starting to profess faith in Jesus and was desiring to know and understand more of God. If anybody's been watching The Chosen, you know, he's one of the, the key characters there, and, and it's quite interesting how they portrayed him um, as somebody who was seeking truth. And I believe that that is true about Nicodemus. Um, and many people do believe that he uh, very much became a follower of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and I would agree. I mean, we don't know definitively for sure, but I think there's pretty strong evidence for that. So here in the scriptures we read, Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Being born again of water and the Holy Spirit refers to being baptized in water and in the Spirit of God. Remember that Jesus' disciples received the Holy Spirit when Jesus breathed on them. Jesus, however, tells them that a further act is required, known as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1.5, I don't think I put it there, um, we read, Jesus told his followers, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. This was actually prophesied also by John the Baptist about Jesus when John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me, 
is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Many, many Christians don't experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit because they haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I'm, I'm going to do a little test for those who have heard me preach about baptism, which is you know probably at least half of you in the room, I'm going to guess. Um, so do you remember what the word baptize means? Anyone? Pickled. Pickled. Immerse. Yeah. Both, both true. Pickled. It, it comes from the Greek word for pickling. So is everybody familiar with the pickling process? It can be used for dyeing cloth as well. Um, so the idea is that you take something, you immerse it, right? So that's, that's when the word immerse comes in. And it stays there until it changes. So you take a cucumber, fresh cucumber, you stick it in the pickling juice, and it comes out a pickled cucumber. It's still a cucumber, technically, right? But it's different. <coughs> it smells different. It tastes different. It's been transformed. It's been changed. So this is the reality of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's a really important thing. Just imagine that really Jesus is saying that I want to completely immerse you in the Holy Spirit, flooding and entering into all of who you are so that you will be transformed into all that God desires for you to be. I think that's a pretty great thing. It's pretty powerful. And it is literally transformative. That the Spirit of God... <laughs> That we be immersed in the Spirit of God, and that the Spirit of God would transform us, in a sense, merging His Spirit with us. Just like the pickling juices merge with the cucumber, or whatever else you may pickle. Uh, just like the dye merges with the cloth. It's still cloth, but it's different, right? We're still human, we're still people, but when we've been baptized, immersed in, transformed by the Holy Spirit, we're different. You're still you, but God is in you. Really, really in you. You smell different, right? We're called the aroma of Christ, right? Anybody who's been baptized in the Spirit, have anyone ever say that you looked different? Yeah? Yeah? Things just become different. Now, I am borrowed a section here in the sermon from Got Questions, um, so I've got to give credit where credit is due, um, and this is about being filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a little bit different than being baptized in the Holy Spirit, but it is also really, really crucial for us in our Christian life. Um, so I'm just going to read what they wrote here. Ephesians <coughs> 5, 15 through 20, the Apostle Paul preaches and teaches believers how to experience a holy relationship with God, how to live for him, obey him, and discover his will as we serve him. He writes, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand that the, what the Lord wants you to do. <coughs> Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the NLT. The pagan people of Ephesus who were worshiping their God would engage in drunken orgies. And they believed that they had to do that in order to commune with their God and to be led by that false idol. They had to be drunk. And in this drunken state, they could determine the will of their God and determine how best to serve and obey him. And that's a quote from um, Matthew, Matthew Andrews. By contrast, Paul 
commanded believers to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are filled with the Holy Spirit when we cautiously consider our actions and yield ourselves to the Spirit's power, allowing him to guide, influence, and govern our behavior. To govern our behavior, right? We call him Lord. <coughs> that means he's supposed to have governance over us. We carefully align our daily choices and decisions with the wisdom and truth Scripture teaches. Being filled with the Holy Spirit in the context of Paul's teaching in Ephesians 5.18 differs from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit at salvation. And you can reference John 14.16-17 through 17 regarding that. Those who believe in Jesus Christ and accept his gift of salvation receive life-giving, eternal, living water of the Holy Spirit. Everyone who belongs to Jesus Christ has the Spirit of God living in him or her. Nevertheless, we can hinder or stifle the work of the Spirit in our lives and even grieve the Holy Spirit, as is written in Ephesians 4.30. Sin and rebellion against God's will will hinder us from being filled with the Holy Spirit. And when we give in to sinful temptations and worldly desires, when we lose control and do what we know is wrong, living as we did before accepting Christ's salvation, we prevent God's Spirit from guiding, influencing, and governing our behavior. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit is grieved and quenched because he is not allowed to reveal himself in our lives as he wants to. With expressions or fruits of love, joy, peace, forbearance, or patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we sin, we should confess our transgressions to God as soon as possible and renew our commitment to being filled with the Spirit. When we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we walk by the Spirit. That's Galatians 5.16. And are led by the Spirit. <clears throat> Live by the Spirit and keep in step with the Spirit, Paul tells us through Galatians 5.25. According to the Apostle Paul, being filled with the Holy Spirit makes the difference between life and death. When we belong to Jesus, the power of the life-giving Spirit frees us from the power of sin that leads us to death. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace, as you find in Romans 8, 6. Instead of living in bondage to sin and fear of death, we live as God's adopted children. Spirit-filled believers trade in fear and timidity for power, love, and self-control. They sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and make music to the Lord in their hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's praying in agreement with the Spirit, right? A heart overflowing with music, joy, and thankfulness to God usually signals a believer who is filled with the Holy Spirit. Finally, Paul describes spirit-filled believers as those who submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit daily by yielding our will to God in submission and obedience to his word. There is no formula to follow other than to allow him to fill us and control every part of our lives, our thoughts, emotions, bodies, and actions. Only as we submit to him and are filled with the Holy Spirit can we experience a harmonious relationship with God and one another. So I know it was a long quote, but they just really covered the basis very thoroughly there about what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. But the thing about being filled with the Holy Spirit um, I think everybody knows that we are called vessels, right? That's one of the ways that humans are referred to as vessels. And when you think of a vessel, I mean, you maybe think of something like this, right? Um, because that is an old-fashioned wor word for anything that can be filled. But don't think only of this. Think of these. Vessels, right? So... Life flows through a vessel. It comes in and it flows through and out. We are vessels in that sense. 
the Holy Spirit flows into us and through us and does its work in us, but it continues to flow. And so we need to be continuously filled with the Spirit of God. We need to be refilled. So being refilled <coughs> with the Holy Spirit... After being born again, meaning baptized with the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit, it is necessary to be continually refilled. After the Jewish authorities punished Peter and John, telling them not to preach and teach in the name of Jesus, what did they do? They went and prayed with the church, with the other believers. They gathered together and said, you know, we need to seek the Lord together. And this is what happened. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness. Now remember, they had already been filled. And now they were filled again. They were refilled. As born-again believers, once we get baptized and filled, we need to be continually refilled. Anybody ever have that understanding that I just need to be recharged? I'm just, I'm just drained, I'm exhausted. And, and usually we think of that in a physical sense or an emotional sense. Um, it's also true in a spiritual sense. We need a fresh anointing, a fresh refilling of the Holy Spirit to help empower us to meet the challenges of today. Because yesterday has already happened. We need his spirit with us now. And we will need his spirit with us in a little while. When we all go home and want to turn on the telly and, and forget about, you know, what we've heard. Or maybe we want to put into practice, but then we just, you know, get distracted and sidelined. We need to be refilled continuously with the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to work in us for us. Not so that he has some sort of a, a meat puppet, right? <clears throat> uh, that's, that's a term I've come to use after many, many years, right? Because sometimes people think that, you know, God somehow, you know, just forces everyone to do what he wants them to do. Um, but he gives us free will, and he wants us to surrender our will to his ways, and to live in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And the thing is, that's not really an optional suggestion for us. It's a crucial part of our life in Christ. I'm running short on time here. Um, so I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. At least no musical play. Um, so how can we live a life filled with and led by the Holy Spirit? Anyone have any thoughts on that? Pray. Pray, yeah. We ask God. We ask God. We ask God. He is the Father who knows how to give good gifts. Jesus said, if you, being evil, know how to good give good gifts, Give good gifts to your children. How much more will the Father give you his Holy Spirit? He wants to give you his Holy Spirit. When you are praying to be baptized with, filled with, filled again with the Holy Spirit, ask him. Ask him. He will do it. He wants to do it. You are praying that in agreement with him. That's clear from Scripture. Sometimes we don't have to guess what we should pray. The Holy Spirit already gave us that in the Word, inspired through those who put the words of God down for us in the Bible. We can live a life filled with and led by the Holy Spirit. We simply have to ask God. Jesus goes on to say that this blessing 
and gift of the Holy Spirit is ours for the asking. Out of the scriptures from Luke 13. He wants to give us his Holy Spirit. He wants us to make ourselves available to the abundant life that he came and lived and died and rose again for us to have and live in. Not only do we need to come to faith in Jesus, being born again, and baptized in the Holy Spirit, but we also need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and be, to be continually refilled and renewed by the Spirit of God. Anybody want to have that? Want to live that way? If you want God to change the powerlessness that you have and to live to the full the abundant life that Jesus offers you, and ask him if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior there's no better time than now if you haven't been baptized in his Holy Spirit there's no better time than now if you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit there's no better time than now and if you need to be filled again with the Holy Spirit there is no better time than now and the thing is, it's always now. It's always now. Wherever you are in your walk of faith with Jesus Christ, it is always now. It's not too late until he comes home or calls you home. Receive the truth that the Father and the Son desire for you to have the Holy Spirit in every way that he is available to you and allow yourselves to receive. Amen? Amen. I'm just going to pray really quick. Father God, I just pray, Lord, that for those who are thinking about and still pondering whether or not they should put their faith in you, put their life in you, put their trust in you for their eternal salvation. Lord, I just pray that you will quicken their hearts and their mouths to profess you as Lord. And Lord, for those who desire to be baptized, to be transformed, to be immersed in your Holy Spirit, I pray that you would answer those prayers. And I know that you will. And thank you that you will. And I pray that nobody would hold back from receiving the baptism of your spirit. And I pray, Lord, that you will also fill those who need to be filled with your spirit and fill again those who need renewing, refreshing, refilling by your Holy Spirit. Fill us today with your spirit, Lord Jesus. Empower us to live the lives that you came in the flesh and lived as one of us and took our sins upon yourself and died for them and rose again, having victory over our sin and the death sentence that we deserved and making a way for us to be with the Father in heaven for eternity. Give us your spirit, Lord Jesus, and give it again. Have your way in the lives of each and every person here this morning. I pray these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Amen. And if, if you made any of that prayer your own, don't keep it silent. Don't keep it to yourself. Remember, one of the reasons that God wants to empower us by His Spirit is to be witnesses. We were talking at the before we began about um, uh, the Salvation Army Church, that one of the things that they would do is, is if the minister wasn't there or was late, that um, they would call on people randomly and say, you know, okay, it's time to give a witness, it's time to give a testimony. Um, we should all have things that we um, can thank and praise the Lord for all the time. <coughs> Let's live lives of praise, singing him songs and hymns and spiritual songs.
thanking him and praising him. Amen?